Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So regular viewers will know that I have a mild addiction to coffee uh, and I very regularly post videos on scientific studies that prove the benefits of drinking coffee. To date, the only negative effects I found are for people who are caffeine sensitive or for those who drink coffee too late in the day and it then disrupts their normal sleep cycle. Enough waffling off me, let's jump into the presentation and let's see what this latest study into coffee and Alzheimer's disease has got to offer. This is a review of a study I read out of the Edith Cowan University where a long-term study has revealed drinking higher amounts of coffee may make you less likely to develop Alzheimer's disease and there are links in the description below to the studies and the articles I used to put this presentation together. As part of the Australian Imaging, Biomarkers and Lifestyle Study of Aging, researchers from the Edith Cowan University in Perth, Western Australia, investigated whether coffee intake affected the rate of cognitive decline of more than 200 Australians over a decade. Lead investigator Dr Samantha Gardner of the Edith Cowan University said, Results showed an association between coffee and several important markers related to Alzheimer's disease. We found participants with no memory impairments and with higher coffee consumption at the start of the study had a lower risk of transitioning to mild cognitive impairment, which often precedes Alzheimer's disease or developing Alzheimer's disease over the course of the study. Drinking more coffee gave positive results in relation to certain domains of cognitive function, specifically executive function, which includes planning, self-control and attention. Higher coffee intake also seemed to be linked to slowing the accumulation of amyloid protein in the brain, a key factor in the development of Alzheimer's disease. Dr. Gardner said, although further research is needed, the study was encouraging as it indicated drinking coffee could be an easy way to help delay the onset of Alzheimer's disease. It's a simple thing that people can change. It could be particularly useful for people who are at risk of cognitive decline, but haven't developed any symptoms. We might be able to develop some clear guidelines people can follow in middle age and hopefully it could then have a lasting effect. If you only allow yourself one cup of coffee a day, the study indicates you might be better off treating yourself to one extra cup, although a maximum number of cups per day that provided a beneficial effect was not able to be established from the current study. Dr. Gardner went on to say, if the average cup of coffee made at home is 240 grams, increasing to two cups a day could potentially lower cognitive decline by 8% after 18 months. It could also see a 5% decrease in amyloid accumulation in the brain over the same period of time. In Alzheimer's disease, the amyloid clumps together, forming plaques which are toxic to the brain. The study was unable to differentiate between caffeinated and decaffeinated coffee, nor the benefits or consequences of how it was prepared, brewing method, the presence of milk and or sugar, etc. If like me, you want to cover all the bases, possibly think about coffee in the morning and decaf in the afternoon. And in my humble opinion, if there are two things that spoil the taste of a good cup of coffee, it's milk and sugar. Dr. Gardner closed by saying the relationship between coffee and brain function was worth pursuing. We need to evaluate whether coffee intake could one day be recommended as a lifestyle factor aimed at delaying the onset of Alzheimer's disease. Researchers are yet to determine precisely which constituents of coffee are behind its seemingly positive effects on brain health. Though caffeine has been linked to the results, 
initial research shows it may not be the sole contributor to potentially delaying Alzheimer's disease. Crude caffeine is the byproduct of decaffeinating coffee and has been shown to be as effective in partially preventing memory impairment in mice, while other coffee components listed here have also been seen to affect cognitive impairment in animals in various studies. So the study states, if you drink one cup a day, going up to two may well help. A quick search on Microsoft Bing came up with this from the FDA and the Mayo Clinic. 400 milligrams a day seems to be the agreed limit. The FDA says that's about four or five cups and the Mayo Clinic say that's roughly four. Of course, there are so many variables when it comes to brew strength and cup size. It will be difficult to state a single number when it comes to how many cups per day. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. Uh, so another positive study into the effects of coffee or caffeine on the body. You may remember I posted a similar video a few months ago, which talked about the benefits of coffee and increasing autophagy. So four to five cups a day, I probably exceed that four to five cups a day. Although that said, the coffee that I drink in the afternoon after maybe two o'clock is always decaf because I am slightly caffeine sensitive. So let me know what you think about the video in the comments below. Let me know if you are going to either take up drinking coffee or increase your coffee intake up to the four or five cups a day recommendation. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, please take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.